All right, we are recording. Um, so welcome everybody. Like I said, my name is Edwige Simon and I'm the director of the Graduate Certificate in Language Teaching with Technology. We are a small program. We've been around for about four years now. And um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about who we are and what we do. Um, I was telling Aaron, I worked on the website a little bit today. I removed a lot of unnecessary information to try to clarify things. Um, what we do through the program is we teach teachers, language teachers, how to leverage today's best technology tools to improve their students' proficiency and intercultural competence. So this is our mission. Um, this is what we do through a certificate program. If you wonder what a certificate program is, um, sometimes people call certificates micro-credentials because it's not technically a master's program. It's half a master's, it's 12 graduate credits, but it is a graduate program. And when you finish the program, you do get a really nice um, degree that you can put in your office. <laughs> Um, and um, these are actual graduate credits that you can transfer towards, for example, a master's program if you wanted to. So that's the certificate. Certificates are usually smaller and they tend to focus on specialty topics such as in the case of our certificate, uh, technology. Um, some information you might be interested uh, in. Like I said, it's 12 credits. Uh, it's a very hands-on and practical program, so in almost all the courses, the students work on special projects and implement these projects in their classrooms. It is a program that's designed for uh, beginners and advanced users of technology. It really depends on where you're at when you enter the program, what your goals are, and how far you want to go. Um, the great thing about a certificate program is that, unlike a master's program, you don't have to write a letter, you don't have to apply, you don't have to send all these documents and letters of recommendations. If you want to start with this program, you can actually register today for the next course, and the next course starts March 30th. So the process is pretty simple. Um, the tuition is $495 for, uh, per credit hour, and so the total cost of the program is a little bit under $6,000. You can take 12 credits, including the two requirements, and get your credential. Or you can just take one course or two courses, depending on what you're interested in. Um, and then you can start at any time. You can take a break. You can take the courses in any order. And all the courses are fully online. And we have courses in the fall, in the spring, and in the summer. Um, you don't have to take the, the TOEFL test, um, but all the courses are in English. I get a lot of questions about that. The courses are all in English because we get French and Spanish and German teachers and English teachers. So the courses are all taught in English. Um, and all you need in terms of technology is uh, a good internet connection, a fairly recent computer with a webcam and a sound card that work. Uh, for some of the courses, sometimes we, uh, we get some uh, extra materials. For example, I'm teaching the Emerging Tools in Practice course right now, and everybody has to buy a pair of Google Cardboards, um, but they are $10, and usually if, if there is um, computers or programs to purchase, it's usually just literally uh, less than $10. And all the course material is provided through the course shell by um, the program. So, um, so that's the program. This is our website. Um, if you're not ready to um, do a full certificate program, you might be worried about how much time it's gonna take, how much it costs. Um, we have a few other options. We do a lot of these webinars and these webinars are always free. We also have a book club and the book club is completely free and it's hosted on the Canvas platform. And when you register, you get information on how to join the book club. And this is what we're going to read starting February 18th, um, virtual reality, augmented reality. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. If you're curious about who are uh, the certificate students, well, you will meet Aaron. We have Stephen who is here. Um, here I have some student stories, um, what, how the students found the program and what they got out of it. 
and we archive all the webinars on the student project page. So you can always go here and see what's coming up. We have a webinar in two weeks uh, on ThingLink and digital literacy and cultural understanding in the French classroom. Uh, and then we have the webinar archive where you can get the slides and the recordings. So this is all I have. Uh, I am going to unshare my screen and I'm going to let Erin share her screen. Okay. All right, am I sharing my screen? You are. Okay. And I just wanna say one more thing, because we're in full screen, I can't see the chat window. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but we'll wait until the end of the presentation to ask questions. Thank you. All right, I'm going on mute, I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> All right, hi. Hi, uh, my name is Erin Sunday, and I'm going to present on fully online Spanish activities in Seesaw. Um, I am a Spanish teacher at Yamhill Carlton High School, uh, which is a very small high school south of Portland, Oregon. Last year we graduated like 87 students, something like that. So we have a really small student population. Um, this is my 15th year teaching. And and the reason I started taking these classes and doing the certificate program um, is that I have been exploring blended learning and online learning as a solution to student absences, scheduling conflicts, um, and other access issues that come up at every school but tend to come up a lot at a, at a very small school um, where I'm the only Spanish teacher in the district. So. <laughs> um, so what is CESA? CESA is a learning Sorry, somehow you went on mute. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, there. There. Yeah? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, hold on, sorry. My lights are on, like, if I don't move, they go off, so. <laughs> sorry about that. It got dark all of a sudden. Okay, so what is Seesaw? Um, Seesaw is a learning management system where teachers share instructions, examples, and assignments with students. And you can do that in a variety of ways. You can share photographs, um, either take photographs or upload them from your files. Um, you can share videos, drawings, which I don't use a lot with older students, but are fun. You can add uh, files. It's, it works really well with Google Documents and that kind of thing, so it's easy to add files. Um, you can just do a note or you can link to outside resources. Um, and in just a second, I'll get into my um, Seesaw account and I'll show you how all of these work. Um, and then students can also share their learning with their teachers um, and optionally their classmates and guardians in the same way. Um, you, can, you can change the settings so that only the teacher sees what students share or their classmates can, sh can see what they share. Um, and a nice part is that there's also a guardian, a parent guardian um, app where the parents can connect to their individual student CESA account and see what their student is doing in your class. Um, so CESA is free and it's available as both an app and as a website. Um, extra features are available for a uh, so, uh, for a subscription to Seesaw Plus, uh, which is $120 per teacher per year. I don't use, I just use the free um, account and it works for my needs. I don't pay for any extra subscription costs personally. So um, let me show you around Seesaw a little bit and then I will show you some student examples. So this is, um, this is a class that I created for the online class that I took, so there aren't really, there aren't any students in it. Um, but Seesaw has, so just to show you how you can show, share different activities and different information with students or that they can share with you. Um, here is how that's done. You can share a photo. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can share video, which you can select or drop or also record. Uh, the drawing tool, like I said, I don't use it a lot because I'm a high school teacher, um, although I do have a fun activity with Ale Brique's in Spanish 1 where they draw um, their Ale Brique, and then they can record or label their drawing that they made. 
Uh, you can just add a file. Um, you can select from your Google Drive or upload a file from your computer. And then you can also link to, oh, I forgot, no, you can link to an outside resource. So if they like make a video in Adobe Spark, for example, they can just share the link to their project with you right there. And finally, you can just add, or the students also can just add a note where you just type, type a note into Seesaw. So let's show you some examples of students of, of some of the things that my students have done. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can be really creative. Um, and these are just some examples of things that my students have done this year. Um, here, a student uh, drew a story using some of the vocab that we've been using um, and then took a picture of the story and recorded himself. I own Chico Sayama Jack. So recorded himself telling the story, for example. So that's one thing that my students have done with Seesaw. Um, you can also, this is a template where I uploaded this template of this Carmen Lomas Garza painting, and then students, uh, and as part of our quinceanera unit, students labeled the template with the vocabulary from our unit. Let's see. Oh, this was um, a project that was pretty fun that a student did. She, um, she created a game to review the content, and then she... Hi guys, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Connect for Spanish edition. So she recorded herself um, explaining the instructions to how to play this game. Um, and the fun thing about Seesaw, this is really cool, I can actually then go to her video and get a QR code for that game um, and print out and paste the QR code onto the actual physical game so that when students go to play the game, they can just use a QR scanner that is part of Seesaw and scan the code that's on the back of the game and then they get to the video of the student explaining how to play her game. Um, so that's a really great feature of Seesaw. Let's see. Oh, just a, you know, just like a video. This is a student explaining from early on in Spanish one what he keeps with him in his backpack. And me, mochila, tengo. Right. Um, I won't bore you. It's all the usual stuff. Nothing exciting in his backpack. Um, and something else that you can have students do, like upload their own photo and label it. And so here a student uploaded the photo and added labels to her photo and then described herself in Spanish. Yo soy alta, rubia. Right. So these are just a few ways that I've used uh, Seesaw this year in my classroom. Um, but there are a lot of possibilities and, and teachers are really creative with the ways that they use Seesaw in their classrooms. Um, so these are the features that Seesaw has. There's the journal and the journal is really like, and actually maybe it's easier if I just show this to you. Oh, uh, sorry, hold on. Okay, there we go. So the journal really works kind of like a Facebook homepage where it's everything that I post for the student um, and then the student sees everything that they post as well. Um, and it's all just chronologic, chronologically in the order that it's posted. So it really works a lot like a, like a Facebook homepage, for example. Um, activities are a really cool feature. In activities, I can share an assignment with students. Um, and so, for example, here is an activity that I made for the class that I took with this program. Um, and I have here an explanation of the activity, some links to some outside resources to help them be successful, um, you know, some brief instructions, and then instructions for turning in the project. When they're done with the activity, the student just hits this add button and then they upload their project that way in whatever way makes sense for that particular project. Uh, and the nice thing about activities is if I had students in this class, you would see all of the students in the class right here and you easily see which students responded, which students haven't responded yet, um, and you can access their activities and grade them from right here. Okay. Uh, there's an inbox here. You can communicate with students and parents, um, and it also notifies you when students upload work or if they send you a message. I don't use this a lot because I just use student email, but for younger students, maybe it's more of a, a feature that I might use more often. Um, skills allows you to add skills to your assignments and so that you can say this assignment is like interpersonal speaking or presentational writing, for example. Um, I don't really use it, and I think it's only part of the upgraded subscription uh, mode of Seesaw, so I don't use it at all. 
And then the blog I don't use because of privacy issues at my school with not wanting to publish student work. But um, at a, I can see at a different school the blog being a really cool feature that allows you to publish a blog to like a, a publicly available online um, website where people can see all of the cool work that your students are doing. Uh, so those are all of the uh, the the things that are available in Seesaw. Um, and I wanted to show you one more thing, which is the activities library, which is really nice. Um, if you wanna share an activity or create an activity for your students, um, rather than creating your own, you can go to browse activity library and you can access a bunch of activities that other teachers have made. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel there. And you can like, if I want just French activities, I can just look for French activities or Spanish activities. So that's a really nice feature to be able to share work with other teachers and borrow work from other teachers as well. So those are the features available in Seesaw. These are what I see as the pros of Seesaw, student choice and flexibility. I really like being able to say, this is the information that you need to, pre to present. You can do it as a video, you can do a drawing and give them some, some choice and flexibility. And there's lots of fun options for how they can present the information to you. The activity library is great. I like that it's a really intuitive interface. It feels a lot like social media that students are used to anyway, and so it's, it's easy for students to figure out how to use Seesaw. Um, I really like at the high school level, um, and I can even see this more at the elementary school level, sharing work with students, parents, parents being able to make their own account and see what their students are doing. Um, and I like that there are options for making things public or private. My school tends to be very conservative about these things, so I have everything set very private, but you can also have more public options um, as well. The cons for me as a high school teacher, it's a little bit young looking, just the aesthetic of it is a little bit young. Um, there's no group text or chat feature, so a lot of times with older students in an online class, you know, the teacher will present a, a, a question or a discussion question and then ask the students to comment and read their classmates' comments and comment on those. And there's no, like, very good way to do that in Seesaw. And there's also no built-in gradebook. So if you're wanting to use this as, like, an all-encompassing program, um, you'd have to use a separate gradebook. There's no, there's no built-in gradebook to Seesaw. So for the unit that I did, um, I did my unit for Spanish 3 independent study class, students who were not able to fit Spanish in their schedule because of some scheduling conflicts. Um, and so I offered this independent class um, where students read several of these, these these TPRS books. Um, and this unit is about the book La Vampirata, and it incorporates presentational speaking and writing, uh, reading comprehension, grammar, and both synchronous and asynchronous interpersonal speaking. Uh, the objectives for my unit were that um, the student can understand the main ideas and key information from the book, they can summarize the plot of the book, and present and defend their opinions about the book. Did they like it? Did they not like it? Um, who's their favorite character, that kind of thing, um, and engage in conversations with both me and their classmates about the book. These are the activities that I included in my unit. Um, I included reading comprehension questions, an Ud puzzle grammar video, uh, which was followed by a Google Quizzes grammar activity to reinforce the concept, um, a Flipgrid chapter summary and response to help them start having conversations about the book and summarize the book. And then a book summary vlog and response as part of the, as their final um, project, they could do one of two things. They could either write a book review in Spanish of the book and post it on the Amazon site for the book, um, or write chapter 14 and create a digital story for chapter 14. The book ends at chapter 13, so chapter 14 is like what happens next. Um, and finally, I created an assignment for a synchronous interpersonal um, conversation using Google Hangouts and a small group of students talking about the book, discussing their opinions and that kind of thing. So I will show you how I presented these activities in my Seesaw. So the first thing I did in Seesaw is I wrote a note to students um, where I just summarized what they would be doing in the unit, their learning objectives, and then all of the activities that they would be doing for the, for the unit. After that, I posted the activities. So activity one is doing these um, study guide questions as they read the book, which are linked right here and easy for them to access. 
um, activity two, here's the Ed Puzzle video that I created with the grammar from the book. So they watch the Ed Puzzle um, and answer questions about the grammar as they're watching it. And then here is um, an online worksheet that I made in Google Quizzes to reinforce the concepts from the video. Um, and I also, the nice thing about Seesaw, you can really um, add a more information uh, to the to the posts. So here, for example, I, I linked to the studyspanish.com um, page about the grammar concept. Uh, here I posted the, the link to the Flipgrid activity where they summarized a chapter, chapter of the book and then listened to their classmates' chapter summaries as well um, and commented on their classmates' chapter summaries along with a tutorial on how to use Flipgrid if it was unfamiliar for them. Uh, here's the summary vlog, which I actually created as an activity in Seesaw. So here's a short little explanation, but then to get to the assignment, they have to go to activities. Um, and here's the activity, and they add their vlog to the activity. Finally, I have the final project, which again, I created an activity for them to turn in the final project. So here in activities, um, the, here's the, the explanation of the final project, some link to some outside sources that can help them with the final project, a PDF of um, a more in-depth explanation of what they would be doing along with all of the rubrics that, would be using, that I'll be using to grade their project, and an explanation of how to turn their project in. And then finally, uh, we have the conversation assessment, which I didn't end up doing with them. I still think it's a cool idea, but I didn't actually do that with, do it with them. So don't ask me how I, how it went. It didn't go. Um, but I still think it's a cool idea. And so here's the, the conversation assessment where they should be ready to discuss the book via Google, Google Hangouts. So those are the activities. And are there any questions? Can you exit out of full screen? Yeah. So I can see the chat. Uh, let's see. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Here we go. And then let me go and find the chat window. All right, everybody, do you have questions? Um, there we go. So go ahead and um, ask your questions using the chat window. I'm also going to um, allow you guys to unmute yourselves uh, in case you want to just ask your question to Aaron. I do have a few questions that I was thinking about um, or just comments about Seesaw because I think it's a really interesting tool. It's pretty new. I hadn't heard about it. Uh, I think the first time I heard about it was um, in, you know, last summer. Um, but uh, how long have you been using it, Erin? Uh, this is my third year using Seesaw. So I got on when it was pretty new. Um, but this is, this, the past couple of years I've been using it a lot more like like almost every day as a part of a really like to really incorporating blended learning in my class. Um, so really for two years I've been using it quite a bit. What were you using before? Or did you have something else? No, I didn't have any other online program that I was using before. Okay. Um, I really like the blog feature. I think it's really unique because very often when you use any kind of course management system, there is not this option to kind of show your work to the world. Like you have to extract it. So I think it's a really nice feature. I really like it. Yeah, um, I would love to be able to use the blog feature, but my school district tends to be very conservative about sharing student information. So yeah, and I mean they should be. Um, and it's the same at CU. Yeah. Um, so oh, I just wanted to say something. So La Vampirata, the uh, author of the book is Myra Canyon. She's a friend of mine and she actually lives in Colorado. So if she watches the recording or if she's here, hi Myra, thank you for writing a great book. Um, uh, so there's a question, uh, how long is the Vampiretta unit? So what's the whole length of your unit? Oh yeah, um, it took this, it took it, well, hmm, like a month, but that was with reading the novel. 
yeah, like a month. It was, but that was with reading the whole novel and answering the comprehension questions. Um, these comprehension questions here took quite a while. I realized that maybe I asked way too many comprehension questions for, per chapter and it was taking them quite a while to get through the chapters. Um, so between reading the novel and then doing all of the activities, a month. Uh, and then there's another question. Can you make individual portfolios and separate your classes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I won't take you into classes that I have populated by students, but you can see here. Um, these are my classes that I'm teaching right now. Spanish one, Spanish two, pasatiempos, and then the independent reading class. So, yeah, you can separate. You can have uh, different courses. And then you can also organize materials into folders. You can create folders. So like in my actual courses, I have one folder where I put like all of their flashcards for all of the chapters. So if they want to go back and review the flashcards, they can just go to the flashcard folder and it's easy to find all of those materials. Um, Marina says uh, her son's teacher uses this in class. He's in first grade. Mm -hmm. She teaches high school students and she wants to know how high school students respond to a seesaw. Um, they they do just fine. I've, I've not had any complaints. It's really easy for them to use. Um, it's really intuitive. And I thought maybe they might think it was like a little bit young, especially with, you know, like the drawing tool and that kind of stuff. It feels perhaps like a little bit young. Um, but actually, I have some kids who love the drawing tool and use it as much as they possibly can. So yeah, my students like it. I've been using it for, like I said, three years, but two years um, quite a bit. And yeah, it works just fine. What about the parents? Did you get any feedback from the parents? Um, I have a few parents that have the parent app and are connected to their students' accounts. And so they like that. They like being able to see what their student is doing. And I have some that sort of learn along with their student because if they connect to their student's account, they also have access to all of those resources that I've posted on Seesaw. So I think I have some parents like taking a free Spanish class from me as they go. So. <laughs> which is nice, <laughs> which is fine. Um, yeah, I think really like in this day and age, parents kind of expect to be able to access their student work um, with, you know, Google Classroom and online gradebook and stuff like that. It kind of feels like if you're not giving parents access to student work, they feel like that's strange or something, so. Yeah. Um. Does La Vampira, then I'm reading a question, I'm not sure. Does La Vampira have different levels? No, no, no. It's a, no, it's just that it does not. It's just this book. Um, I used it at the beginning of Spanish 3. It's pretty easy. It has a lot of cognates. I would say that it's like a novice high level. Um, um, and it's, and it, but it's all in the past tense, which is why I used it in Spanish 3, because it's pretty easy, but all in the past tense. So a nice way to review preterite and imperfect. Uh, we have a suggestion here. Maybe the students can read chapter 14, the one they need to write, and then vote for the one they like. Ooh, I like that. That's a really good suggestion. Thank you. Um, and another question here. Would you say that the platform is user-friendly? Yeah, it's really user-friendly. Um, I didn't watch any tutorial videos or anything on how to use it. Um, I just realized I needed an online platform and I found this one and I liked it and I just sort of clicked around until I figured it out. Um, and the same with the students. I mean, it's pretty like to add something, you literally hit the big circle with the plus in it, you know? So, so it is pretty intuitive and user-friendly. Um, for students to join the account, they just create an account for themselves. to create an account and then you just give them a student code um, and they just put the student code in and voila they're they're connected to your account and it's really easy to generate a student code you just uh, uh, I say it's easy and now I can't figure it out so that's embarrassing but there's it's really easy you literally there's just a button that says generate student code and that's what you do <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm just going to answer this question. Yes, Erin um, is using the free version right now. Yeah, I'm using the free version. Yeah. Um, do you know there is a French version of La Vampirata? A French version? Yeah, if my oh, French. writes oh. in French too, so I don't know. I have no idea. 
I like, we can ask, we can ask. Yeah. Anything, mm -hmm. either. Um, and then another question on, uh, including, so I'm going to read the question. Um, uh, you said that the unit is like one month. Do you work with the book every class for that month or do you have other activities that are not related to the book? Oh, so this was for like a fully, like I didn't meet face to face with the students at all. So this was the entire, um, the entire, everything they did is this because I, this is a fully online class. Although I teach in a traditional school, this was a fully online class for students who couldn't fit Spanish three in their schedule um, because it was at the same time as rocketry and they were both singleton courses. Um, so, uh, so no, there were not, there weren't other kinds of activities that they were doing. Um, but I also teach on a block schedule and I only see them twice a week, which I feel like once we switched to a block schedule, I wasn't able to get as much done with them as I have in the past, um, different topic, but so yeah, uh, there were no other activities. It was just, just these. A uh, comment from Stephen saying, including the students' parents, like you said that, you know, the parents were accessing and learning some Spanish from you. Sounds like a great affordability of the platform as a public school teacher. It seems like a great service to the community. Yeah, I think so. Um, and one more comment saying, I've been using Seesaw and I love it. So it's, it's definitely a very interesting platform. Yeah. All right. Any, any more questions? Going once, wait a couple seconds, if somebody's typing. Um, but yeah, this was great. Thank you so much, Erin. Yeah, thank this you. Is, this is a really, uh, this is a really fun uh, unit. So <laughs> thank you. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording if I can find this button. And